stations across the land, JoePags.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email. It's all right there, plus the live video feed. It's the Joe Pags Show. Glad to have you here. Really glad to have this guy on. His name is Wyatt Eicholtz. It's Eicholtz, right? That's correct. Uh, well universe, uh, thank you. Uh, University of Alabama is where he attends, although you're in Wisconsin right now, right? <laughs> yep, Milwaukee. Yeah, we'll figure out how that works uh, in a second. But really glad to have you on. We love having the young reporters from campusreform.org on. I think you guys do an amazing job putting the legacy media to shame every day, doing real reporting. But I've got to get into the fact that you're in Milwaukee and you go to school in Alabama. And I know that uh, a lot of the classes have been online. Have you been able to go back to actual school in the past few months or has it all been online? It's all been online. And in fact, I didn't even get that many Zoom classes. Most of my lectures were recorded. Uh, beforehand, and I just got to watch them at my convenience. And while it was nice to be able to do that at double speed or in weird hours of the night, I did miss having that opportunity to actually ask a question in real time or to have classmates to bounce things off of. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you don't get to see your friends that you got used to. I mean, the classes have been completely different now. I do like the flexibility about watching it whenever you want. And then what do they do? They quiz you on what you supposed to what, what you were supposed to have watched beforehand, and yep. they quiz you online? How does that work? Everything went online. I had a bunch of quizzes and even a few final exams over an online platform, and it worked well. That's what we've been doing for the entire semester. For a couple of these classes, we got through it, and um, there was no major issues. Would you prefer to go back to class uh, on a, on a uh, permanent basis or do some of this online? Because I guess we found out that we can do a lot of business online, whether it's school or doing business or doing things like this. We can do that now. Do you think that it'll be full-time back in class? Would you prefer that or not? I most certainly would like to go full-time back to class, at least pre-COVID class. I'm not sure what campus will look like now that everyone has to take into account special social distancing features. But I do agree that this whole online distance learning has taught some people that maybe in-person classes aren't for them. I have a couple of friends who are in that same boat. I was actually raised homeschooled, so I know all about distance learning. I personally prefer having it in class, but I know that there are some people who may not make that same decision. I haven't, I've been in college since 1985, so I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really know, uh, you know what, what it looks like to not actually go. We, we did nothing online because we didn't know that online was going to exist. It is uh, uh, Wyatt Eicholtz. He is from campusreform.org. Let's get, in, get into the, some of these stories. A UCLA professor has been suspended, and he's under he or she is under police protection. Uh, wh- what was the crime that this person did? So UCLA instructor Gordon Klein declined to give black students or minority students special grading policies on their final exams. The policy goes back, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, that that got him suspended? That got him suspended. A student in his class asked him if he could provide special grading policies for the black students in their class in light of the George Floyd protests. And in an email, Gordon Klein essentially disagreed and he pointed out a number of issues with that kind of policy, raising a number of rhetorical questions. And in response to that, a social media mob essentially took the case, and a petition of 20,000 called for his firing. The UCLA administration, specifically the Anderson School of Management, decided to cave and put Gordon Klein on a suspension. They suspended the guy because he doesn't want to give special treatment because of George Floyd protests. I guess I'm not following. But why is it that people, and maybe this is rhetorical as well, but why is it that people need us to believe that black people aren't as smart or aren't as capable? I believe black people are just as smart as I am, are just as capable as I am, and, and to lessen the requirements because of a skin tone or racial background, an ethnic background, I think is denigrative. I think that's saying that you're somehow less than I am, and they're not. I don't understand it either. I don't think it makes sense, and neither did Gordon Klein. But the student government, the Undergraduate Student uh, Association Council, released a letter that was signed by the entire government, student government, as well as 80 student organizations, apparently said that Gordon Klein's email invalidated the blackness of his black students. Now, I don't see anything in the email that reflects that. And in fact, in his prior communications to his students, Gordon Klein provided them with anti-racism resources and ways that they could take this into account in their own lives right. nothing in the email was in any way racist so he somehow took the blackness away from his black students i didn't know that we had the ability to do that do, uh, can somebody unwhite me is that how it works i'm not really sure the letter doesn't provide specifics and when i asked them to explain that 
they didn't respond to any comment questions. His uh, his name is Wyatt Eicholtz. His Twitter is at w underscore e i c h one. Go and follow him there. Smart young man goes to the University of Alabama. The OSU football coach Mike Gundy. We we've covered the story extensively on my show, but I certainly want to get your take and the take of CampusReform.org. He dared wear the wrong TV network T-shirt. Had it been a CNN shirt or an MSNBC shirt, I think you and I can agree we would not have even heard about this. But fill us in for those who aren't up to date on this. For sure. Well, in a Facebook post, OSU coach Mike Gunby decided to wear a T-shirt while he was fishing. And that T-shirt just happened to have the logo of One America News. A CBS sports writer decided that that wasn't appropriate and posted it to Twitter. And the social media outcry was enough to demand an apology from Mike Gunby. Even some of his own players said that it was unacceptable for their coach to be sporting a T-shirt from a different news network. And he did. He came out and apologized. And this, for those who don't realize, this is the same guy, although his hair is longer now, that um, I, I guess 10 years ago or something was out doing a news conference and said, I'm 40. I'm a man. I'm 40. I'm 40 years old. And this is the same freaking guy who now kowtowed to a Canadian running back, by the way. This guy, Chuba Hubbard, or Chuba Hubbard, however he pronounces it, is from Canada. And he had a problem with this, this T-shirt because allegedly it's a racist network. Now, I've seen some OAN. I had uh, one of the reporters on my show yesterday. There's nothing racist about the network. They just don't happen to agree with Antifa and the far left, the things that are happening in the streets. So uh, w- what else are we hearing on this? Is this thing squashed now, or are they going to do some sort of a uh, diversity classes and sensitivity training? What else is going to happen? Uh, so far, I don't know what type of changes are going to be made. I heard that there was going to be some changes made in the locker room, and then the students fact-checked that, and they said that, no, those weren't our demands. Those changes aren't necessary. Things like no rap music in the locker room that had explicit language. I don't know where that was coming from, but so far, all we have is the apology of the coach saying that I apologize for any discomfort my teacher may have caused you. Such a dumb Dumb news story. I mean, honestly, his T-shirt can only cause discomfort for himself as he's wearing it, not to somebody exactly. who's looking at it. It's uh, Wyatt Eichholz from CampusReform.org. Go to CampusReform.org every day. Check out these great stories. These young reporters do an amazing job. American pride among uh, among young Americans is at an all-time low. This is by design, isn't it? I mean, when you indoctrinate somebody to how bad we are and how we need socialism every single day in class and, 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 and generally on social media, you're probably going to get people who don't like the country. Exactly. Professors routinely teach only one side of the story of American history, specifically the side that talks about all of the worst points. We see that among the social sciences, four times as many professors identify as openly Marxist as there are identifying as conservative. And that reflects on the students. 40% of students nationwide, I support socialism. I'm not sure if they can define socialism, but they at least say they support it. And among philosophy majors, the thought leaders, the people who will be writing books and driving the thought in the future – 80% say socialism is a good idea. And this is intentional. I believe that this is academia essentially trying to undermine American values. Can can you imagine in a country where the First Amendment uh, allows for them to say what they want, to um, uh, to to opine however they'd like, whether for the government, against the government? I mean, you try to do what they're doing in China, they would kill you or lock you up. But the fact that we have the Constitution that makes us great, they're using that to try to make us less than great. It's like Antifa. If you say, hey, you can't go out there and march and be violent and be crazy. Well, I've got my First Amendment. The First Amendment, Wyatt, that they're trying to get rid of. I mean, that really is, that's the juxtaposition, isn't it? It really is. They found a way that using their right to free speech to express their ideas, they found the way that being via the power of the mob, getting this cancel culture activated and weaponized, they can shame and silence people into submission, and they've unlocked that, unlocked that and unleashed that in full force, as the other two stories we've been talking about put on full display. It's it's unbelievable. His Twitter is at W underscore E-I-C-H-1. It's uh, Wyatt Eicholtz from, uh, from CampusReform.org. Before I let you go, uh, COVID-19, coronavirus, in your circle of friends, are, are, are young people afraid of this? We're seeing like where I am in Texas, there's an uptick in cases, generally between people who are 20 to 30 years old. That's because people who are 20 and 30 years old like to get together, like to go to the bar, like to hang out, like to to, to socialize. Are you seeing a, any sort of, um, well, what, what what is your circle of friends saying about COVID-19? Are you asking concerned as the media thinks that we all should be no among my circle of friends at least we all are pretty much in agreement that the virus isn't at least dangerous for our group right Uh, many of us are willing to take some precautions and maybe stay away from elderly people but we want to have fun i remember as soon as i got back to milwaukee and everyone had finished up with exams we all went out for some good old milwaukee custard because we wanted to see each other 
I've never had Milwaukee custard. Is that the deal? You got to get some custard there? Oh, it's definitely the deal. If you want to get Wisconsin cheese custard, you can get that from places like Culver's. But in Milwaukee, places like Cops are the best. Uh, I, I, I think it's great. Listen, young people are not at risk. Those who are healthy are not at risk. This is about elderly people and those who have pre-existing medical conditions. We should have shut down the economy for them and protected them and let the rest of us go back to work. But when you see the uptick in numbers and then you see the left bash the right, see, it's because you open these states and, and these people are only taking your direction. Are you waiting for walking papers and walking orders from your governor as to whether you can go in and hang out with your friends and have some custard or are you just doing what you do? I'm certainly not. In fact, I don't think that those numbers actually reflect the details. Wisconsin actually was, is an interesting study because our Supreme Court overturned our governor's policy right, which and I was said that it was see. passed. Right, it was against the state constitution, and a study found that that did not cause an uptick in cases. People know how to handle this safely. People, generally speaking, know how to respect the limits that need to be respected and can conduct their lives according to the freedom that they've been given by our constitution. Listen, I think he did a great job. Hopefully we can do this again. His name is Wyatt Eicholtz. Go follow him at W underscore E-I-C-H-1 uh, on Twitter. He's from campusreform.org. Check out that website every day as well. Wyatt, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. It's been so great to be here. All right, brother. We're back after this in the Joe Pag Show. Stay right here.